So this is, in a, this is a view from a uh, balloon overlooking the battlefield. These are the trenches you see here. Um, this is sort of what the trenches look like on a side view. Uh, you can actually see guys sleeping here, and there's a guy getting ready to shoot over the top. Um, there's, a guy, there's people sleeping on this side. Trenches were pretty nasty business. Here you can see Germans walking down their trenches. Um, here's what bunkers look like inside the trenches. Hey, there's a dog right there. Um, these are in people who are fighting for England from India, who, which was part of the English Empire. They're in the trenches in Europe. Um, another guy sleeping in the trenches, uh, shooting over the trenches here, pulling a body out of the trenches. Look how thick the mud is in no man's land here. Um, and here they are again in the trenches. I think I'm going to show you a picture now of something called trench foot because you used to be in the, the water for long periods of time because it, it would take sometimes weeks for the water to drain out, especially because it was clay, and your foot would begin to get this fungus that would rot away. And this is pretty gross. If you don't want to watch it, skip ahead. But this is someone's foot after trench foot began to rot it away. Um, here you can see a this is a tank, and they're looking across no man's land here in this photo, no man's land here. Uh, these guys are charging out of the trenches across no man's land. And some more no man's land pictures there. One of the new innovations in warfare during this time period was a machine gun. Uh, the machine guns they created for World War I could fire 450 rounds a minute. Very deadly things. Um, some pictures of the machine guns. These guys have the machine guns on, and they also have their gas masks on, which we'll talk about in a second. Machine gun nest here. Uh, rapid fire artillery, big cannons that could fire very quickly. Um, they reloaded, could fire huge shells, and they reloaded really quick. And you can see how big some of the shells are in this picture down here. Um, reloading. I, I love that picture of the one going off at night. Another innovation was hand grenades, um, little handheld explosives. That, these are American hand grenades where you pull the pin. This is the trigger. As long as you have your hand on it, the hand grenade doesn't go off. As soon as you let go of it, this thing flies off, and you usually have a few seconds to get rid of the grenade before it explodes. Um, it's not a side view of the type of grenades we used. These were the German grenades called nicknamed potato mashers for obvious reasons. This is another one. You press the detonator down. It, it's, as soon as you press it down like a button, it's ready to go. You throw it. This is another German one. Um, another innovation during this time period was poison gas. You would launch canisters at the enemy. They would fall in the trenches. The gas would stick around in the trenches. Um, the worst of these was mustard gas, which burned the inside of your lungs. And if you didn't die of asphyxiation or choking to death, it would leave permanent scars on your lungs, and you'd have trouble breathing the rest of your life because your lungs wouldn't expand correctly. Um, they even put gas masks on horses back then. The U-boat was an amazing thing. It was the first submarine used in warfare. Uh, they were silent. You didn't know where they were. They didn't go down very far at this point, but you couldn't see them, and so they would attack ships uh, without warning. Here's a, They used to call them wolf packs, and there's a wolf pack of, of uh, U-boats ready to go out. There's one breaching the, the waves there. Um, any ship suspected of smuggling goods from America to Europe or vice versa uh, was sunk on the open ocean and they, without warning. Here's a travel notice telling everybody, this was in a, a newspaper in New York, telling everybody from the German embassy, if you get on a boat traveling to Europe, you're taking your life in your own hands because there's a good chance that boat, no matter if it's what kind of boat it is, might get sunk by the Germans. It's a warning, fair warning. Tanks, um, tanks back then were really, they have these huge, these huge long treads because they're designed to roll over the trenches and not fall into the trenches. Um... So they work. If, and if you were marching, you get behind. Not like this guy, but these guys, you get behind the tanks. They usually had crews of eight or nine. They're pretty dangerous. This one has wheels on the back so it doesn't tip back when it's going over the trenches. Um, they're really just armored cannons at this point. They don't, they're don't. they not super powerful. They only go six or seven miles an hour at tops. Uh, they break down all the time. Uh, most bullets can pierce their armor. So they're not safe to be in. Uh, but they're pretty scary looking, even the little ones they had during World War II or World War I. And last thing is air power, and that's planes. They were a new force in warfare, having armed planes. Um, and that's it for this lecture. We will finish a little bit to finish. We'll finish it next time.